This is a quick video to try to uh, guide you through the design of a fourth order Butterworth low pass filter for a pulse width modulated DAC. So I'm just going to walk you through a 10 kilohertz uh, bandwidth or cutoff frequency design. So um, you're going to do uh, an RLC, Salon and Key, and multiple feedback fourth order. Now the Salon and Key and multiple feedbacks can be uh, designed via the analog devices filter tool, but the RLC cannot. It's, it's not an option there. And what you actually need to do is break up that fourth order circuit into two second order circuits for which then you can have a series RLC circuit. And if you go to Wikipedia, it's actually done the denominator for you, right? And then the numerator would be omega not uh, to the fourth. So essentially now you have two transfer functions with these constants and you just scale it by whatever your omega not would be, right? And if you multiply these two together, you get the, the transfer function by inserting an op amp in there as well. We have some design equations that'll give you the R2 and the R1. Um, and this would be the circuit that you would get. Notice the L and the C are the same, but it's the resistor that changes. Um, I even have some Python code to calculate this. Now, uh, the inductor's 56 millihenries that costs about a dollar a piece. All right. Then this is the Salon and Key topology, and this is the uh, multiple feedback. All right. So uh, what we want to do is make sure that we um, we verify our filter. Uh, First thing we want to do is measure the, the uh, frequency response, which um, in this case I want to do a decade, 20 points per, um, I'll start at 100 which is two orders of magnitude above and I want to start it and see 10 megahertz, then you can see everything. And then if we run that, oops, it's actually stepping something from a previous simulation. Um, it'll just look a little bit funny. But here's my outputs. Okay. And we can see V out one is the RLC. Looks pretty ideal, except a little bit here at the higher frequencies. V out three is a multiple feedback. Again, that looks, uh, the phase starts to deviate at higher frequencies, but the V out two, Salon and Key, actually has some major issues. Although it actually still works pretty well because, um, well, you'll see why. But that's a pretty start sharp curve. So most of the harmonics are filtered out before we get to this point. But sometimes the Salon and Key can really cause an issue. Now, uh, once you do that, we need to see the step response. Okay. And we'll see some interesting things here. Ooh, that's the wrong step response. So, um, so that's our step response. We can see an overshoot because it's a um, it's got complex poles, and notice that it takes about half a millisecond before really all the oscillations are out. Um, 
the Salomon key again has a an offset voltage issue due to the that op amp you can switch out the op amp to fix that although I looking at the data sheet I don't think the LT1630 its offset voltage is actually as bad as it is in simulation but you need to remember this value 0.5 It'll be different for your filter, right? Depending on what your cutoff frequency is, your settling time will be different. All right, but now that I know that, we can take a, another look and run a simulation where we're at um, 's rerun it now I've, t I've changed the clock frequency oops it's still running to twice the cutoff frequency so it's 20 kilohertz clock frequency and you can see it still takes some time to to rise up but it's actually taking about 5.5 milliseconds to actually settle to where the peaks are correct all right, but this ripple is the ripple we would see if the pulse width modulated frequency uh, were 20 kilohertz. And so fitting these peaks into one volt is how many levels you would get. But notice it is averaging, if we were to average it further, at 0.5, which is what the first um, coefficient of the expansion would be. Now you could change this clock frequency and measure the peak to peak. Change, measure, change, measure, change, measure. And that'll take forever. All right. Um, I've set up a file here where it's it automatically where F clock is that's the clock of the microcontroller. Right. If you had a different clock, you'd enter a different number. Right. Then we um, have a simulation time minimum. Then it, now a T on clock is essentially, um, you know, half that duty cycle. And now here we are stepping F pulse width modulated. So we're changing it. Right. And we're going from 1K to 1 meg um, in steps of 2 per decade. Then our pulse width is one over that. And then here is our on time, 0.5. And then our simulation time is 10 periods plus that 500 micro. All right, so that 500 micro is that settling time I measured before. It'll be different for you. Now in your simulation, ST, that's how long you go. But you don't want to, you want to get rid of this time because if you're automatically extracting these peaks right it'll actually take this peak and this valley right and as you go along it, it just it won't be accurate so you've got to uh, go out that distance Where are we? so if you run this oops which will take some time and I don't it's it'll be seven right you'll see this and that's and not only that look there's these peaks which will make it even harder to measure but this is just when the clock frequency is near the cutoff frequency as you zoom in here you could actually see the peak to peak that we're trying to get after but it's just too there's just too many lines for you to really interpret all right so what you do is you go to view spice error log right plot step measure data and then there's this equation here that you add a trace and put it in and this is your effective number of bits but it, it's kind of funky looking because we started at 1k we're going up to 1 meg and we've only got like one step per decade or two and then it interpolates it so you get this kind of weird 
shape. And so these simulations do take a while, right? So we want to kind of zoom in on the area of interest. Okay. And so I've got an equation for that. All right. And that equation, it's derived here, which is, takes a bit of reading. It's not really part of the tasks, but I'm just telling you where it's coming from. So for a fourth order filter um, with a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz and a, and a clock frequency or max clock of 16 megahertz, right? The effective number of bits should be 7.4, and this should happen at a frequency of 46 kilohertz. Now, this is an approximation, all right? Um, but it'll be near that. So if you essentially change your clock frequency that you're sweeping over, your pulse width modulated frequency, to below the 45, let's say 10, and above the 45, let's say 100K, and now zoom in on 20 steps. So this line gets inserted here, right? And you right click and then press cancel and then edit it. And so I've actually edited it there, right? You run it, there'll be 21 solutions, uh, simulations. And you have to redo the whole plot again. You have to look at the spice error log, click the spice, um, the measured data, and then enter in these equations again, where ripple one, two, and three are the various output nodes. And then you'll see this very smooth curve, and that the maximum is happening at 59 kilohertz, or That's not exactly the maximum. That's just the picture. I went and extracted it. So at 62 kilohertz, the first filter gives 7.72, then 7.74 effective number of bits. It's, so the maximum frequency are all like 62.27 kilohertz. And the effective number of bits for all three filters is 7.2 and change. And so that is really the, I mean, the filter has been verified at that point. That's your results, right? This is almost the abstract, right? I'm even giving some analysis here that the differences in the effective number of bits isn't meaningful. And, and that Salon and Key filter, which were two people, but there's two ways to show it. You can do Salon and Key. Um, so then you would do all of that except for your frequency. Um, and yeah, there'll be some Python code that'll pop out your frequency. Okay, have fun.